primary love, primary, before anything is the love to be. That's the primary love. That's what's referred to as heart. The being, it's your primary love. You fight to stay alive for all your worth. You know, if you were drowning, you'd be fighting to stay. It's the primary love, the love to be. Yeah. And that's not uh, uh, a conceptual kind of love. It's a direct experience. Yeah. And it's primary in all human beings. Just people don't realise that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, my primary love's my kids. No, my primary love's my girlfriend. Notice I didn't say wife. <laughs> no, not very good. <laughs> By the time we're married, <laughs> yep, the, the <laughs> husband or the wife is, let me tell you, is not the primary love. <laughs> no. We tolerate them. <laughs> and sometimes we love them <laughs> and, and a lot of time we don't like them <laughs> yeah, but that 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 um, it's that same primary love that brings two people together when they fall in love that'll be the terminology that gets used oh I just fell in love with this person it's that primary love that brings them together if you like, because we can't choose to do that. We can't make that happen. You know, if we if we could, we'd be falling in love with someone new every day. Why? Because it feels great. But we can't do that. It's just something that arises, something that occurs. And it's interesting that we don't even question that. Really interesting that look, we don't even question. That even the, the dynamics of that, what's going on? You know, what happened to, where, <laughs> where's free will now? Where's, who's, who's pulling the strings? <laughs> I didn't choose to fall in love, it just happened. Is it about hormones and all that stuff? Yeah, that's more sexual drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is okay, that's, you know. It'll procreate, otherwise there'd be nobody here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can have um, uh, a couple of elderly people where their, you know, their sex drive's long gone. They can still fall in love. Yeah. So. And I'm trying to get you guys to notice the being, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes I refer to it as, you know, now, but, you know, even using that terminology now is incorrect because it implies a past and a future. So, again, you know, even when I say it now, it's a pointer. Yeah, we've got to use... I have to use dualistic language. I, I try to use it as skillfully as I possibly can or it comes through as skillfully as it possibly can. But at the end of the day, it's still dualistic. The language. Yeah. If there's no such thing as a past and there's no such thing as a future, there can be no such thing as a now. Yeah. You know, some often it's just referred to as is. <laughs> like, <yeah. clears throat> primary of the love to be. Yeah. And we're so busy ignoring that and chasing after other things that we think we love to try and feel that love. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think there's a real freedom in um, 
accepting what is. Yeah. And like the, accepting what is often means the shoulds aren't hanging around because the shoulds seem to be part of the mental furniture of um, obligation and law and custom and all that kind of stuff, which is overlaid on, yeah. on, on people. And, you know, yeah. you're guided by the shoulds of the, you know, the shoulds that exist, but just actually experiencing what is, yeah. which may not have anything to do with any of the shoulds is quite an interesting, also mm. interesting place. Mm. Um, Even um, uh, we have to be careful with uh, acceptance, Lloyd, because that sounds like somebody that's now in a state of just accepting. Yeah. There's no one that can accept or not accept. Just <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah, we just don't know. But we know it. There's a knowing of that. You know, it's, again, if we use dualistic language, it's nothing appearing as everything. Because yeah. yeah. as, as soon as, you know, that, that non-dual, even saying it this way is incorrect, okay? But as soon as that non-dual is experienced, because now it sounds like a person's going to experience it, that's not what I'm implying. Yeah. But as soon as that is um, experienced, <laughs> everything goes out the window. Everything goes out the window. Yeah. Hence your statement about Everything that can be said is a lie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Or, 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 or dishonest. Not, not true. Not true. Yeah. Um, when, when I say dishonest, it's, it's, I'm, I'm referring more to the mind that creates this personal me and thinks it's a person and running around and is a doer and yeah, that's dishonest. Yeah. Um, anything I can say about this is is not true. Yeah. It's just I'm just constantly trying to point to the truth because I'm using dual, dualistic language. It can't be true. It yeah. ultimately can't be. Yeah. Yeah. So your language is meant to point us to 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 the silence to yeah. the being and and uh, yeah. yeah yeah but uh, but there's no one here doing that yeah. and there's no one there that can receive it either or get it and yet something happens <laughs> or you could say which would be just as valid nothing happens <laughs> Because that's what's happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing's not happening. Yeah. When we when we start to get into this te this territory, the mind goes, "What? What? What are you talk? What?" Because mind's dualistic. How can you be and not be at the same time? would be a fair question by a dualistic mind. How can you be and not be at the same time? <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Even to say in your direct experience is wrong. That's a wrong thing to say. <laughs> There's no one there that could have a direct experience. So again, it's a pointer. Yeah. And all that's pointing to <laughs> is this. And it's all just happening. There's no person here doing anything appears to be, seems to be, but ultimately there's not. There's no one there. Yeah. That that beats your heart, Lloyd, <clears throat> is also responsible for the thoughts that you're aware of. You know, and what that that is, don't even go there. Because <laughs> we'd conceptualize it. Yeah. We become dualistic again. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's It's mind that creates a dualistic, artificial reality. Only mind. Yeah. Only mind. And it has plenty of holes in it, by the way, the, the, the mind created reality. Yeah, it sure does. There are a lot of, uh, you know, if you poke in certain places, there is nothing there. There yeah. is actually. No, not even concepts. There's just a yep. paper veneer of yep. what actually might be there. Yep. There is, not, there is actually, it's it's so artificial and so thin. Yep. It's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's a huge shift, isn't it? The knowing of that. That's a huge shift. It's, you know. Mind starts to lose its power at that point. Something else begins to be noticed, if you like. Again, I'm using words, but. Yeah. Maybe mind's protect protecting us. Oh, look, yeah, well, yeah, but there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no us that needs protecting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That would be reasonable to say, dualistically, that would be reasonable to say. Yeah. Dualistically, yeah. You could just as much say, um, you know, perhaps psychologists were designed to protect us. So we got someone to go to. Could say that too. Dualistically, you could say that. Yeah. It's, it's the assumption that there's me and other. Me, a person. Other is also a person. But the truth is, if you examine that, yeah, in your direct experience, you have no idea if a, another human being is a person. You have no idea. None. Mind says so. Can you experience their personhood or personage? Right, so that's an assumption right there, isn't it? A belief right there. I can know there's consciousness throughout and I can accept that consciousness lives in another human just like me. Or, you know, like, not a discrete me, but a, 
you know, the apparent, the apparent sea of perception. You know, there's it's cool. the one thing that is the constant. Cool, but here's the problem with that. What's consciousness? Believe, believe, believe. You see what I, I mean? <laughs> you see what I mean? You know, I mean, that's a fair, that's, I'm, I don't want to be critical. That's a fair statement that you made. I'm just getting really pointy now. I have no idea. Yeah. So drop that. Anything that you don't know for a fact, Lloyd, drop it. Examine it. Like examine all this stuff that, that comes up for us, yeah, um, it'll all arise as thoughts, yeah. Examine it. Like, <laughs> the truth is, you don't even know who you are, let alone assuming there's another person. <laughs> yeah. Just mind that it's all mind that's creating this seeming reality. And it's a complete, absolute illusion. Total illusion. If you guys have heard me say before, like, like, How do you get off the wheel of samsara? How do you get off that wheel? Because apparently, you know, the theory goes through countless lives, each time we come back, we're just that little bit better. And each time we just that, until eventually we come back for the last time. And in that Last time, the theory goes, we become finally enlightened. Or it's sometimes referred to as we reach nirvana. Now, here's the funny thing about that. Yeah, Let's assume that that, that was all correct. It's not, but let's just, just assume for a moment that's all correct. Yeah. The last time, the last lifetime, what's realised is there is no wheel and there is no person on a wheel. There is no, you know, birth and death and reincarnation and birth and death and re it's, it's a concept, pure absolute concept, again, created by mind. Great, Lloyd. Like, <laughs> oh, my friend, everything is a concept. It is, yeah. yeah. Even one's idea of what consciousness is, awareness is, even what being is. There's a concept about that, yeah. It's there to, it's there to assist and help and encourage and all the best reasons in the world that it's there. Yeah. You know, like, there are good, there are really great concepts encourage people and they're shitty concepts that don't want, don't encourage people. Yeah, but again, there's no people to be encouraged. <laughs> yeah. But again, dualistically, what you said is valid. Yeah, it makes sense. Dualistically, it makes sense. But ultimately, you come to see there is no person there is no persons. Yeah. That's the true freedom. Yeah. Then there's what we, what you're left with is just the <laughs> uh, again. I can only speak about it dualistically. What you're left with is the direct experience of being. Conscious, aware, yeah. with no one that's conscious, no one that's aware, and no body that's being. Yeah. Thankfully, 
There's a knowing in all of that. There is a knowing in all of that. Yeah. It's not like you're going to kind of arrive in this place where you're stumbling around in the dark and don't know what to do and There's nothing that can be said <clears throat> about what's happening outside of mind. And further, and there's nothing that needs to be said about what's happening outside of mind. Nothing. <clears throat> 